G'day everyone, Blake here with another video and today I want to bring you another live food culture that you can start to feed your fish today. Today we're going to talk all about Daphnia, fairly simple, there's a few pitfalls though to avoid, so let's jump straight into the video. So let's get started with talking about Daphnia and first of all we'll cover off what they are and why they're going to be so great to feed to your fish. Well, Daphnia are a naturally occurring form of freshwater plankton, and actually in most bodies of water in the world, you can find wild Daphnia. This is really great because although a lot of our fish in the aquariums are captive bred, some of the wild types and some of the more hard to feed fish will be used to eating things like Daphnia in the wild. So it might be that last key that you need to unlock um, success, keeping a really tricky fish. Other than that, any of the more common fish, you know, guppies, platies, and other community fish will really love Daphnia as well, and everything just goes crazy for the hopping motion that they exhibit in the water. Daphnia are commonly referred to as water fleas, and that's because their body shape is very similar to common land fleas. Culturing Daphnia is fairly simple since they live their entire lifespan within the water column. All you really need is some properly prepared water and some aeration. We'll get onto that a bit further on down the, into the video. But the great thing to know is it's really simple to culture and if you do it successfully and are able to uh, ensure that the culture doesn't crash, you can culture these guys into perpetuity. Things like brine shrimp are a really great live food to culture, however, you do have to keep buying eggs, but something like Daphnia is self-sustaining and they'll create their own eggs and their own offspring and live their entire life cycle in your culture. That life cycle doesn't take very long, they're fairly short-lived, only up to a week, but that is where some people do fall down trying to keep Daphnia, is maybe you sit on the culture for a little while and you just wait for the population to grow, but this can happen very, very quickly due to that week-long life cycle. So if you forget about them for a few days or a week, the population can very, very quickly multiply and they'll start to become a bit cannibalistic and ruin the water quality as well. So that's one area where people can fall down and have their culture crash. Outside of that, if you are able to keep them and have them survive, they'll provide a really great source of carotenoids, vitamin A and vitamin D to your fish. Carotenoids are great for natural color enhancement, vitamin A is great for development, healthy development in particular, and vitamin D, just like in us, is great for bone, de bone development and healthy bones. Three really great building blocks to get into your fish and, and ensure that you have really vibrant colored, healthy fish uh, in the long term. And the other great thing about culturing Daphnia is you can also culture other things in the exact same tank. You could give it a go of Daphnia and blackworms, for example, or Daphnia and amphipods or scuds, and you can get a really nice mixture going of some great live foods to feed to adult and baby fish alike. So to get started, where do we get our starter culture from? And there's three options when looking to procure some Daphnia. First of all, you can buy it in this Daphnia egg form here. These can be readily found online on eBay or other sites like that, and are fairly easy and cheap. You can also store them, for example, I keep these uh, eggs as a bit of a backup here so that if my colony does crash at least then I can start it up again from here. If I open this up here you'll probably find that usually it'll be within a capsule. Sometimes they might be loose in a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag but for me I've just got a little capsule of eggs here for a rainy day if things do go wrong. The second option is you could of course wild collect them if you are from an area that the water doesn't get too cold or too hot. Just head down to a local creek or riverbed, scoop up some muck from the side of it, put it in a jar, give it a week or so to settle, and you might see some little Daphnia hopping around in that water. If not, and if you just wanna go the easy route and make sure that there's not gonna be any other pests or things getting into that um, culture, like if you were to go and wild collect it, then you can just pick up a live starter culture as well. And in just the same way that Daphnia eggs are found, it should be fairly simple to find a starter culture of Daphnia, whether that's through another hobbyist or a club or on eBay or another website. Then I'd recommend getting at least one uh, fairly sizable jar that you can fill up with water. This guy here is a half gallon or two litre jar here and I'd just fill it up with dechlorinated tap water. If your tap water is between 7 to 8 pH then that's brilliant because just like shrimp and snails, 
Um, Daphnia do have an exoskeleton which they do shed, so they enjoy a bit of hardness in the water. They will also enjoy a supplement of calcium, which you can provide through you know, various um, shrimp supplements or also through cow grit, which is typically used for chicken farming. So once we have our appropriate water in here, it's time to talk about temperature. And Daphnia don't really like a temperature too high. As close as you can get it to about 22 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit will work brilliantly. I'd give it maybe plus or minus two degrees either side of that. And the last thing that we're gonna need is some aeration. And this is a really critical one that I think a lot of people fall over in because typically when we go to put aeration in a vessel like this, we're taught that the smaller bubbles are the best because they get the most surface agitation. However, with Daphnia in particular, you want very large bubbles and that's because small bubbles can get under the carapace of the Daphnia. Then they'll be floating all the time. They won't be able to swim properly and eventually it will lead to their demise. So we want very large bubbles just to break up the surface area and oxygenate the water. So you can provide that just through an, a piece of rigid airline or you can just try and weight down a normal piece of airline tubing with a rock or something like that and get some slow moving large size bubbles into the culture. Once we have our water and aeration in our vessel, put our capsule of eggs in there or whatever your egg source comes in. And then it's just a matter of waiting about 48 to 72 hours to see the Daphnia hatch out. And once the Daphnia have hatched out, it's time to start to think about what to feed them. The very best food for Daphnia because they are a filter feeder is green water. So if you're able to culture some green water by having some water maybe standing outside or under 24 hour light, then that's gonna be perfect for them. But if not, we can substitute this with a mixture of yeast and spirulina powder. So I prepare this just get, by getting some warm water and some yeast and some spirulina powder, mixing it all up and then storing that in my refrigerator so that I can feed sparingly. I do really wanna emphasize feeding sparingly because the quickest way to ruin your culture of Daphnia is by spoiling it through overfeeding. Keeping, keeping in mind that we don't have any filtration on our culture, Things like spoiling and rotten food is gonna go a long way to ruining our water condition and making it uninhabitable for our Daphnia. The way that I do it is I just take a small pipette and feed about one milliliter of this. The water will go a bit cloudy. I'll wait for the water to clear up and then I'll feed it again. You could also try other types of flowers like chickpea flour or pea flour to try and get some food into them. But um, for me, yeast and spirulina powder seems to do the trick. So once we allow our culture to grow and uh, thrive for a few days, then it's time to start to think about feeding out of it. And just like baby brine shrimp, we are fortunate in that Daphnia are attracted to a light source, so it's fairly easy to feed them out. All we really need is a fine net, such as a brine shrimp net. I actually have a reusable coffee filter as well that I like to use, and it's just a simply a matter of shining a light at the top of the water surface, scooping up underneath some Daphnia and feeding out just like that. I found culturing Daphnia to be really, really great, especially for fish like my pea puffers, where typically I've been feeding them live blackworms. However, they're a bit shy and the blackworms do tend to bury themselves into the substrate before the pea puffers come and eat them. So something like Daphnia that's gonna stay up in the water column, stay moving around, I can make sure that uh, my pea puffers are definitely gonna eat before the food's able to escape. Realistically, the only way that you're gonna lose your culture of Daphnia is if it crashes. So just reiterate the importance of don't overfeed, making sure that you are periodically feeding out of there to maintain that colony number. And just make sure that you're not allowing the water to get too hot, especially in those summer days. I just wanna stress as well, I know some people like to culture their Daphnia outside, and it does make it easier to get that green water happening and keeping the Daphnia well fed. However, if you live in an area that gets quite warm during summer, your water temperature could rise to the point that uh, your Daphnia don't survive. Also, other pests could be introduced, such as dragonfly nymphs and uh, mosquito larvae as well, so be mindful of that sort of thing. But uh, other than that, you can definitely culture Daphnia inside, outside, in all sorts of containers, in tanks, in jars, whatever you like, it can be done. And uh, other than that, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you've got any further questions, be sure to drop them down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've found it helpful. And I wish you all the best if you do choose to culture Daphnia now or into the future. If you did like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.